in this review, we're going to be taking a close and detailed look at the Metal Deformation MPM KO Starscream Tattoo Edition for Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon. This is literally the single greatest transformable Baver Starscream in history. I am convinced and I can't wait to get into the details as to why this one is truly the Starscream for the ages. Let's get into it. What's up, Alfonso Nation? Alfonso Peterman here today. Welcome one and all to another episode of Teletran Reviews. I am beyond hype for this one because this is probably one of the biggest highlights in terms of the newest figures that I've gotten recently. And this figure is truly worth the highlight. It's worth the spotlight today. And I can't wait to get into it. Before we do, I'd like to thank Shozy Store for providing this figure for review. You can get this figure and others at their site. I will leave a link in the description box below. They are truly one of the most reliable merchants I've ever really worked with for Transformers figures. They really do a good job and I've had little to no issues with them. So if you're considering this guy or any other figure that might be of interest, the link is in the description box below. So here we have the F12 Metal Deformation uh, packaging. So this is the same exact packaging as the previous uh, rendition. Uh, as you guys know, they did put out one uh, for the KO version of the MPM Starscream, but it was a different paint job, and I thought that was the best one until now. So the packaging is pretty simple. As you can see, you've got the, the actual F22 jet. Uh, and it's just kind of like a, it looks like a blueprint or like a drawing of it. You've got F F12 at the bottom. If you turn around, you've got F12 on the side. And then you've got the same relative scheme here, except it says metal deformation. And that is pretty much consistent on like the edges. You see, you got metal deformation and metal deformation. <laughs> so it's a plain white box and it's got just gray like letters and writing on it. But it is pretty stinking cool, actually. I like the drawing of the F-22 jet. It's very simple, but it does the trick. I can care less about the packaging because the figure is worth the figure is worth it. So let's just dive right into the figure because I really can't wait to showcase the Dark of the Moon slash Revenge of the Fallen paint job for the MPM Starscream. Let's go. And oh, oh my god. Here he is in his immaculate robot mode out of the packaging. This is literally the greatest Starscream I've ever laid my hands on. This is all I need to represent the Bayverse Starscream, and this thing does it with absolute precision. This is obviously the Revenge of the Fall and Dark of the Moon paint, uh, the uh, paint scheme, which is the tattooed edition, but it's literally, it's literally, I'm freaking out behind this camera. First of all, the base paint, so the base silver, is really nice and shiny. It has a shiny finish, so there's no matte finishing when it comes to this guy. It's really, really well done. You can see kind of the glare from the lighting and how it really shines well. You can see that head sculpt and all the chest uh, detailing is the exact same as the original MPM. The paint is what really, really brings it out here. And I am absolutely, unbelievably blown away. Look at how amazing this is. Like, it just has this beautiful, like, shiny gradient on top of the additional... Uh, painting the schematics for the tattoos it really does show and it's just one of the most if not no 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 no, no. it's the most beautiful star screen that i've ever had and is the only star screen that i will ever need excellent head sculpt here where you basically have those gold accents you've got the gold paint along with the silver paint and it just really really comes out nicely the beauty of this guy doesn't stop with the figure because there's also changes done to the actual accessories so here we have the absolutely excellent missile launcher this is his signature launcher that he's used so many times throughout the uh transformers movie franchise and 
it is just the best version. I mean, this material here is kind of like a harder plastic. It's not a rubber, so you won't have it just kind of like, you know, stuck in like a bent position. It's like a thinner plastic, but it's plastic. It's not rubber. So there's no rubber here that I can see, which is a big plus because I hate rubber on weapons. I just absolutely can't stand it. And you've got some beautiful Cybertronian hieroglyphics here on the actual stem of the weapon. And then you've got some more hieroglyphics, just the overall general hieroglyphic theme to kind of blend in with his arm when you connect them. And just for a little bit of a comparison, this is what comes with this guy and the other version, the KO version, that the uh, first KO version, this is basically the difference. So that you can definitely see the base of the paint has changed. You have that darker gray matte feeling texture overall that came with the original one. And I thought this one was just way much better, which it was, but this one basically took it and just made it chrome. And that is just so much better in my opinion that's just absolutely beautiful and this would be the bucksaw weapon the signature bucksaw weapon that he uses all the time and absolutely gorgeous i mean absolutely awesome it still does spin fairly well it does a really good job with that and then you've got the little goat accents here you've got some goat painting here nice silver base just like with the figure itself and then you've got some some little gold paintings here, a little red wiring. So it's all consistent. And then you've got some more Cybertronian hieroglyphics here looking great for the arm. And in contrast, I mean, this is a really big contrast, especially with the uh, Bucksaw from the KO version. So this is the KO version, the original one. It has that orange, orange thing. And it, it looks, it doesn't look very accurate. But I mean, as you can see in comparison, it just pales pales in comparison to what you get from this paint job this is just the one now if you are a fan of the 07 version of starscream obviously the ko version is the one to go if you want a better paint job than the original hasbro but if you're a dark of the moon fan or your range of fallen fan and you want that tattooed edition that's this is this is the way to go i'm telling you and last but not least this is the little mini gun little mini blaster that also comes with him as with the original hasbro it does rotate so you do have that same motion there and it has a beautiful chrome uh like paint texture to it it's very nice and you've got that same uh golden yellowish paint that's consistent with the rest of his design and the other actual weapons that come with him so it's really nice i'm a big fan of this little blaster and to contrast this is the one from the previous version and i don't see much of a difference with this with the exception of the color of the actual rings the actual little the, the little rings here, the little gold rings. As you can see, this is what I was talking about with the differentiation in the color. You've got the gold. It's kind of like a light gold. So it feels more like a gold than this kind of bronze looking burnt gold kind of rusted looking uh, paint scheme. So that's about the most with this minigun. But overall, it does look great and it does blend in well with the overall silver of the figure itself. Turning now to articulation, uh, this is one of the most important things, especially to go over with third party figures because with these types of figures, it's kind of a hit and miss when it comes to third party with the quality that you'll get in terms of the stability of the joints and the overall quality of the plastic while you're maneuvering the joints. Those two things are big factors. What I will have to say about this guy is that I'm absolutely impressed with the overall durability of this guy and the consistency of the joints. Every ratchet joint, from what I see in my experience, have done a terrific job. However, there are a couple of joints on this thing that is problematic and i'm gonna show you uh it's not a deal breaker for me but it could be for some of you so i definitely want to show it the ratchet joints are really nice so you've got obviously articulation here his arm does come up it does come all the way down you've got the elbow it does bend up like that and it actually does come all the way back if you so decide and then the arm does rotate and then you've got some some wrist uh, movement here and then the, the wrist also rotates uh, with the arm. I'll just kind of demonstrate that here. Wrist rotates there. And then you've got some hand movement. Obviously, this is part of the transformation for the blasters. And the arm does come all the way around. It's just obstructed by the wings, but it is possible to do it all the way around like that. You just have to kind of maneuver it around the wings and finesse that. We've got some movement here on the chest, so that's kind of cool. You can kind of do that. Just like the original Hasbro MPM. The legs do come all the way out, and then they come down again. And then they come all the way up, high kick like that. You hear those ratchets? Those are nice ratchet joints. And they do come all the way back like this. 
so you can get them really far back when you bend it, it you do have that double jointed knee so you got the ratchet here it comes here so you can get that nice chicken leg post and then you've got some pivoting here for the feet and obviously the feet can move up and down but it does unlock if you move it out of position too much so it looks great there and the leg does kind of rotate kind of like this back and forth and for the head the head does look up kind of like that not too much you can kind of push it but it, it, it doesn't come up very higher than that and down and then if you have it up the mouth does open as if he's screaming and you can close the mouth and then the head does move all the way around but there's quite a bit of obstruction in its way but you can pull it off if you if, if you finesse it a certain way just carefully pretty well done with the ratchets and it does hold up for a good third party the issue that i wanted to show you guys is in this elbow and i'll show you guys when i put on the accessories this little ratchet joint here is not really ratcheting at all and it's very loose when you put a like a weapon on it he begins to like easily drop his arm so it's hard to keep the arm up with the missile launcher so basically same process with the hasbro mpm you just basically connect uh this little piece into the hand and then you just lock it in with the arm and then there you have him holding it but the issue that i was referring to is that you have to basically arch his his blaster up because if you put it out straight, then it is easily gonna fall like that. So you, we, there, there is a little bit of an issue with this holding up the weapon. Like you can try to, you know, any little movement. So if you do it like this, where you hold it up at an angle, it's fine. But as soon as it comes down to like a, like a 180 degree, as soon as it gets to that flat piece, it gets really, really easy to move. And just one tap, one light tap and the whole thing comes down so that's consistent on both arms that's a little unfortunate honestly because <laughs> um, every other joint is perfectly tight it looks great so i don't know what happened with the with the el like the elbows but that's an issue um that is worth uh, discussing so for me it's not a deal breaker i mean i'd rather have this figure and deal with that then you know have another figure that has great joints but not the best shelf presence or display presence that's just my personal preference but basically there he is with the beautiful weapons connected and he looks absolutely fantastic you guys i am literally this is like my favorite star scream and he does a really really good job another thing i will say is that this back peg that you would normally use to store some of the weapons if they're not being used is does not do a good job at all with holding them so if you have like a weapon here you want to store it 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 pegs in but it's extremely loose so any little thing any little tap or bump can it'll fall out just like that so i tend to just like peg it in and just kind of let it sit and not move it around too much which honestly it doesn't really work well as you can see but i kind of expect that stuff like i expect I actually expected way worse of this figure. I thought I would have a whole lot more issues with terms of quality and the overall maneuvering of the joints. And I thought there would be a lot more QC problems with this. So for elbow joints that technically do work at certain angles, just not straight ahead. And for one peg that doesn't peg in completely, but you can still put it in there. It's, not, it's just not going to be as firm as the other versions. I think I'm okay with that. I'm willing to take that sacrifice to have something as beautiful as this. Because that, this, this is why I love this figure so much. And of course, I gotta compare him with the first version of the KO, his predecessor. This is the uh, first KO version of the Hasbro MPM. Obviously, it's designed after kind of like the 07 version, which is what the Hasbro MPM was designed after. So this is the direct copy the first version that they did release and you can definitely see a clear and present difference you can already tell uh, that you've got the kind of like a smooth matte overall aesthetic filter with this guy whereas you've got more refined details and you've got even the brighter gold and the tattoos with this guy it's truly and honestly a night and day comparison with these two individuals and i honestly think that both of them are terrific both of them crush the hasbro version just in the sheer quality of the paint giving you just a little bit of a closer look at that you can definitely see the differences here 
and it really does show uh, nicely um, turning around to the side there you got the comparison of them on the side and then we're gonna turn to the back and the back you can really see in the wingspan you've got the details here with the the uh, hieroglyphics with this guy and then you've got just a standard uh, jet with the actual logo here I think the logo is on this one too yeah there it is so we got the logo there as well and then you've got it's just basically more details you just got the hieroglyphics and the silver versus the matte kind of uh, plain looking military style it looks more like a disguise actually <laughs> so people might prefer this one because this one is more like disguised it looks more like a regular military jet while whereas this one is pretty much a cybertronian inversion what i will say however is with this guy at least the joints on this guy can actually hold up the blaster without any issues you see it's a little more firm than the previous version you see the previous version would have been on the ground by now and just for a couple more scale comparisons here we do have the studio series sentinel prime my custom version with the dna kit and that is kind of how he scales with a voyager class figure looks like that would be the difference between voyager and npm so there you go and then in addition you also have the comparison with the rescue pioneer Dark of the Moon Ratchet. Now, see, now this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. I absolutely love how they look together. I mean, honestly, this is just beautiful. This is Bayverse reincarnated. This is pretty much as good as it's gonna get until you, and unless you go for 3 0, and at that point, there's no transformation uh, capable, but man, oh man. This is my childhood right here. This is literally what I grew up on, so it really does put bring a tear to my eye. You know, it brings a nice tear to my eye to see the accuracy and see how great these figures are coming out to be. And, oh my. <laughs> oh my god, I'm freaking out behind this camera. It's the first time I've transformed him the tattoo star scream. This is him in his alt mode. Oh my goodness. I'm like losing. Okay. So here we have the Transformers tattoo star scream with the hieroglyphics. I am like, I'm in a state of shock. Like, I just can't believe something this nice is like possible with like the engineering of Hasbro and the paint job of this third party company. The F-22 jet with all the hieroglyphics, you can really see the full designs and shapes of the hieroglyphics. This is just so fantastic. And you even have, I, I mean, I don't know if this is just my model or if this is just how it's supposed to go, but you've got some blue accents on the hieroglyphics and it looks to be intentional because it's not uh, symmetrical and the same actual like designs like the pattern designs is not the same there's no like curvature here as you have here so this is a probably going to be intentional with the blue uh accent with the color it is so nice it is so nice you still have the the logo there uh right there it looks just awesome and this is the underside of him you even have some hieroglyphics on the underside for the legs obviously for the robot mode but it does show in the alt mode as well so the transformation is the exact same as the original npm and the ko version it's the same thing the transformation was pretty easy it was the exact same uh the joints and all of the different uh, are pivots and movements that you need to do to be able to get this guy in alt mode is rather stiff so i would exercise caution it's not really easy to maneuver it, it does take a little bit of heavy handling uh, and that's consistent with a lot of third-party figures but I'm just blown away at the result I mean this is just what I'm talking about for the sake of it we'll go ahead and we'll apply some of the weapon storage it's the same thing so we'll just go ahead and peg this in here you can do it this way or here I like to do it here on like to where it doesn't like uh, like the actual length is not uh, longer than the the tip of the jet. I like that and then we'll come to the underside and we'll just go ahead and peg one of these guys On the underside just like that. Oh that missile launcher is so nice guys gonna angle him. Oh, yeah. Oh My god. Oh my god 
<laughs> oh my god, that's so freaking awesome! Oh man! Okay, there he is. All the weapons are there. It, it, it looks, it looks so good. Ah, that is the Starscream I prefer with the tattoos, and this figure just hammers all the nails, just absolutely bombs it. I mean, yeah, there's a few quality issues, but I could care less because look at this. Absolute stellar figure, big fan of this, MPM, KO, uh, Dark of the Moon, Slash Revenge of the Fallen, tattooed version of Starscream. Guys, that's all for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, drop a like on it. If you're new, subscribe. And if you want to get this figure, once again, get it at the Show Z Store site before it's too late. If it's out of stock, they might restock. They do a, do a good job at restocking. So, anyways, that's all for this review. Thanks for watching. This is your Teletrain reviewer. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Till all are one.